How's it guys? Ulf here. With patch 9.2 Eternity's End only days away, it's time to take a look at some important information you need to know and my top 7 new features coming to World of Warcraft in 9.2. As always, if you've not already done so, please consider subscribing to the channel by pressing the big red subscribe button down below. It helps the channel out more than you know and if you belong to my discord server, you can get a special subscriber discord role to distinguish yourself from the rest of the pack. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the video shall we? Patch 9.2 Eternity's End is set to release on Tuesday 22nd February 2022 for US and Wednesday 23rd for EU servers. In the first week of the patch we will gain entry into the new zone Zerath Mortis and everything it has to offer. From the 1st and 2nd of March, US and EU respectively, the new raid, the Sepulchre of the First Ones, will open up on normal and heroic difficulties, but only up until the 8th boss, Anduin Rin. The last three bosses on normal and heroic, along with mythic difficulties, will open the following week from March 8th and 9th. Raid Finder Wings 1 through 4 will start opening on the 8th and 9th and then every two weeks thereafter on the 22nd and 23rd of March, the 5th and 6th of April, and the 19th and 20th of April. That now brings us to the first item on my list of top new features coming in patch 9.2, number one being the new raid. During January, I managed to join in with some groups over on the PTR and tried my hand at mythic raid testing for the first time. And although some of the bosses were rather difficult with their mechanics, they were enjoyable and I had quite a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to defeating them when the raid opens up on live. The bosses that we will be fighting in the Sepulchre of the First Ones are The Vigilant Guardian Skolex the Insatiable Ravna Artisifer Zymox Dawson the Fallen Oracle The Prototype Pantheon Lehuvim, the Principal Architect, Halandris, the Reclaimer, Anduin Rin, the Lords of Dread, Regalon, and finally, the Jailer himself. Number two on the list is the Protoform Synthesis. Protoform Synthesis is a crafting platform very similar in nature to what we had over on Mechagon. There are around 50 mounts and battle pits to collect from this system and each requires that you find a schematic and the materials required to produce the given item. To gain access to the forge you need to finish chapter 3 of Eternity's End campaign and then put enough research into the cipher of the first ones so that you earn the Dalek Understanding talent. Whereupon Pokopok will offer you the Protoform Synthesis quest. There are four items that can be found to power the system. First are the schematics, which can be found everywhere from a standard boss drop to just lying casually out in the open and only need to be found once. Then there are three consumables, a lattice, a rare or glimmer item and genesis motes. You will be able to collect these materials from creatures all over Xerath Mortis. With the glimmers and motes being account bound so you can trade them between your characters and the lattices you will be able to buy and sell over on the auction house. It will be interesting to see what these will end up selling for once they start to enter the market. Number three on the list are two new accessibility features, mouse over and click casting. Mouse over casting is nothing particularly new but something that required add-ons and macros to work. Now. It's just a simple option under the accessibility menu. Click casting is also kind of what it sounds like. You will now have the ability to keybind a mouse button to an ability and if you use that button on either the unit itself or the unit's frame it will cast that ability for you on that unit, saving you from having to target things before being able to cast an ability. In the number 4 slot is the new Torghast game mode, the Jailer's Gauntlet. This new style has 8 layers each with 8 floors of bosses for you to take on. 
This new wing being added to Torghast with 9.2 essentially removes all the adds and souls in the layers and instead is a straight gladiator style fight with the remaining adds spawning anima powers that you need to choose mid fight or else lose out on the benefit that they may provide you. As you can see from my attempts here, I ended up taking a lot of Zovol's Versatile's Vittles, which made my pet huge and gave him 300% increased damage by the time I finished the run. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Torghast and only really ran its halls to get the Soul Ash required to produce my legendary, but I really enjoyed this new Gauntlet style. I think it comes down to me being too much of a completionist. So I cannot ignore ads and things and just complete the layer as quick as possible. Number 5 is some changes coming to skinning. Skinning is being changed to follow normal tag rules and so long as you have engaged the creature and have the ability to skin said creature, you will not have to fear someone coming along and stealing your skin. This also means that people can group up and farm skins at a much faster rate because now instead of only one person being able to skin the creature, all five people in the group will be able to skin it, yielding five times more skin per one kill. Who knows what this will do to skin prices as there will now be an abundance of it just laying around. But the economy is a strange thing. The only thing we can do is wait and see what happens after the patch drops. Number six on our list is the creation catalyst. The creation catalyst is unlocked once you fully uncover the secrets of the first ones and is essentially a way you can trade in an armor slot piece for a tier set equivalent. For example, say you get hold of a pair of eye level 265 gloves that are not part of your tier set. What you can do is go down to the creation catalyst and use some of the new currency Cosmic Flux to exchange the gloves for an eye level 265 progenitor set of gloves that will give you a part of your tier set. Pretty much any armor you obtain while doing Eternity's End content, be it PvP, Mythic Plus, etc., can be converted. Only crafted items pretty much won't work. And the last thing on my list at number 7 is the Dark Moon Dance Off. The Dark Moon Dance Off is the newest addition to the Dark Moon Fair since the roller coaster that was introduced in early BFA. The dance off pits you against an NPC who will give you a sequence of runes to remember and repeat. This looks like it could be a lot of fun, but I hope that the rewards from participation are suitable and that there are different difficulty levels available. I would hate for it to be way too difficult and you only receive like one prize ticket for your efforts. Guess we'll just have to wait and see how it looks when the next Dark Moon Fair comes to town. And that's it for my top 7 new features coming to World of Warcraft in patch 9.2 Eternity's End. Thanks a lot for watching, if you enjoyed the video please consider leaving a like and a comment, subscribing to my channel and pressing the bell icon to be notified about any future videos. Cheers guys!